A Musical Life, Episode 1, A Lonely Song. What's your go-to song when you're feeling lonely? Does hearing or playing that song reinforce sad feelings? Or does it actually inspire something beautiful out of isolation? This episode is about one particular song that I think epitomizes so many different aspects of being alone. Welcome to A Musical Life. My name is Hugh Sung, and I'm a classical pianist. My hope with this podcast is to share stories that reveal the power of music to move us, to connect us to ourselves, and our own stories in ways that are sometimes hard to name. I'll be sharing my own stories and inviting others to share theirs. And in the process, I hope you'll find your own story in the music as you join me on this journey. This episode of A Musical Life is brought to you by the School of Music at Cairn University, a center for imagination, innovation, and excitement in the diverse world of music. Visit cairn.edu forward slash music for more information. Once again, that's cairn, spelled C-A-I-R-N dot E-D-U forward slash music. Back in 2001, I was invited by the Masterworks Festival to perform Ravel's Piano Concerto in G Major with conductor John Nelson. Masterworks is a four-week Christian music festival that brings together both professional and student soloists and orchestra players with the goal of inspiring them to grow spiritually as well as musically. Of course, I was delighted each time I was invited to play a concerto with them, and it had started to be a bit of an annual pilgrimage for me. At that time, the Masterworks Festival took place at Houghton College, which itself is in a pretty isolated yet lovely area of western New York State. Maurice Ravel was a great French pianist and composer of the late 19th and early 20th century. I had played several solo piano works of his, and I particularly liked the uh, Alborado del Grazioso from his Miroir Suite and particularly enjoyed his fiendishly difficult Gaspard de la Nuit, but I had never gotten around to learning his concerto up until that point. So I was particularly delighted when I was invited to play this work. Now, the first movement of his concerto has a lot of really cool jazz influences. Ravel loved American jazz and, in fact, had a particular admiration for George Gershwin. So you really hear a lot of it in this first movement. It starts off with a great whip crack, and then it kind of goes into this jazzy party between the orchestra and the piano. Let's listen to a little bit of the opening of the first movement with me at the piano, Maestro Nelson conducting, and the Masterworks Festival Orchestra.
The last movement is a crazy torrent of notes endlessly spinning madly to a dizzying end. It's really difficult to play, but absolutely spectacular to hear. A lot of fun to perform with the orchestra. Let's listen to a little bit of this. So given the difficulties of the first and third movements, to be honest, I had spent most of my time and energy focusing on those. A lot of notes to learn, very, very difficult, technically speaking. And to be honest, the second movement is just not that difficult, the piano part itself. So I, I guess I gave it kind of a straight read-through when we had our first orchestra rehearsals. And after the first rehearsal, Maestro Nelson wanted to see if we could have some time to go over the piece together. When we got together, he pointedly asked me, have you ever played this concerto before? <laughs> now, when you hear that question, that's a conductor talk for, you really don't know what you're doing, do you? <laughs> um, I was a little taken aback by that question. And um, he... He proceeded to tell me, or actually he proceeded to try to describe for me the mood that he thought that the second movement really need to embody. And he started off by trying to paint a picture for me to think about as I approached this movement. He said, imagine a French cafe, late at night, the customers have all gone home, the waitstaff is finishing up, cleaning up the tables putting away all the silverware. And there's this one guy seated at the corner by a beat-up old upright piano. There's a cigarette dangling off the end of his mouth. And in that quiet, isolated environment, he puts his hands on the piano and starts playing this lonely, heart-achingly beautiful melody.
I have to say, the sound picture that Maestro Nelson painted for me was, was really powerful. And it helped me to rethink the second movement and try to infuse a sense of quiet, loneliness, nostalgia. And uh, it's interesting, as the movement develops, the orchestra starts to become ominous and menacing with these lugubrious chords that begin to rise, threatening to overtake the piano like someone struggling to escape from quicksand. It's kind of like a struggle with dark emotions when you begin to feel oppressed and overwhelmed. And just as the orchestra seems to get the upper hand with the piano flailing about in desperation, the sun breaks through and the piano becomes a filigree with the opening melody now taken up by a haunting English horn. Ever since that performance, for many, many years, any time I had a time in my life when I felt alone or isolated, that second movement would keep coming to mind. It was just the perfect companion to help me express those feelings. And I wanted to find a way to play more than just that beautiful solo opening. I wanted to play the whole piece, the orchestra part and the piano parts together. I tried to see if any arrangements of this had been done, and there were actually a few of them out there. The problem was that while the piano parts were written out well, it was missing a lot of the orchestra things, which I found so interesting to really show the conflict between the orchestra and the piano. It left too much of the orchestra stuff out. So I thought maybe I could come up with my own arrangements to keep as many of those elements in as possible. Not an easy task trying to do disparate things at the same time when you only have two hands, 
requires a lot of pianistic sleight of hand. But I think I figured it out. So, for example, here is that same section that I was describing with the rising ominous orchestra chords and the piano playing at the same time struggling against them, reaching that apex climax where the, the piano breaks through like sunshine and starts to descend like a, a falling leaf over that beautiful orchestra melody line. Take a listen and, and see what you think of this. The wonderful thing about making music is, of course, that music really becomes your companion, your confidant, that voice that expresses feelings that you just can't put into words. And I have to say, this second movement of the Ravel Piano Concerto has, has been that friend that I've been able to kind of confide in, in some of those moments where, you know, I feel alone or perhaps I just want to enjoy the inspiration of isolation. Loneliness can be sad, but loneliness can also be breathtakingly beautiful and wonderful moments when we can find refreshment and inspiration in something quiet. So what songs are you drawn to when you feel lonely? It doesn't have to be a classical piece, mind you. It can be any song that really resonates with you when you're feeling alone, email me at stories at a musical life.com 
or visit amusicallife.com episode 001 and share your experiences with lonely songs in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. On the website, you'll see a video of me playing through my arrangement of Ravel's Piano Concerto's second movement, so be sure to check that out. You'll also see a link to post a review on iTunes. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like this show, I hope you'll support it by subscribing with your favorite podcast playing app. This episode of A Musical Life has been brought to you by the School of Music at Cairn University, which is committed to instilling excellence in its world-class faculty and students. With degree programs in music performance, education, composition, worship, and music, the School of Music at Cairn University prepares students for a world where globalization and technology present new challenges in the way we listen to, perform, teach, create, and engage music. Located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, just minutes away from Philadelphia, Cairn offers students a private Christian university experience, including rigorous undergrad and graduate programs, a dynamic college campus life, and the personal investment of faculty. For more information, visit cairn.edu forward slash music. Once again, that's cairn, spelled C-A-I-R-N dot E-D-U forward slash music. Special thanks to the Masterworks Festival for providing the archival recording. You can learn more about them at masterworksfestival.org. Special story consultation and production assistance by Allison Pockris. Until next time, I'm Hugh Sung, and I wish you a musical life.